All right, so we've been doing a lot of algebra. We're going to take a short break from that. We're going to talk about graphs for polynomial functions, right? So we've been looking at polynomials. We've been looking at things like how to factor them, right? Things like long division, all this stuff, algebra, manipulating polynomials. What about graphing, right? Later on, when we're doing calculus, there's going to be a fair amount of graphing involved. Um, what do polynomial graphs typically look like? Um, well, it helps to first think about what do power functions look like? Okay, so what if I have a function that looks like f of x is equal to a times x to the n? Okay, so n here could be 1, 2, 3, and so on. Okay, well, depends somewhat on whether A is positive or negative, okay? But let's do N equals 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll do a few just to, just to get a feel for, for what's happening, okay? So... coordinate axes in each case. There we go. All right. Now, when n equals 1, of course, in that case, you're just dealing with a linear function, right? x to the 1, we get a straight line, right? A straight line with slope a intercept 0. So it passes through the origin, right? If a is positive, positive slope. So we have something like that, let's say. If a is negative, negative slope, we're dealing with something like that. n equals 2. That's your basic quadratic opening upwards. If a is Bigger than zero, opening downwards, if a is less than zero, okay? n equals three, your basic cubic looks like this. It starts negative. It's going to flatten out as it passes through the origin and then head up. So it's going to look like this, okay? And if a is negative, same thing but flipped, okay? Cubics are going to look like that. Uh, degree 4, degree 4 looks a lot like degree 2. Um, it's just going to be a little bit steeper on the edges and a little bit flatter on the bottom. We get something that kind of looks like this, okay? Something like that for degree 4, okay? Um, degree 5, it's going to look a lot like degree 3, except, again, steeper out here, flatter in there. Degree 6 is going to be like degree 4, but it's going to kind of be, again, a little bit steeper on the sides, a little bit flatter on the bottom, and so on, right? So, in general, all the even degree ones are going to look something like quadratic. All the odd degree ones are going to look something like cubic, okay? Now, it's important to know what these power functions look like, because uh, in general, right, you're going to be looking at a function of the form, say, a n x to the n, right? It's going to be your leading term, plus maybe some lower degree stuff, right? General polynomial function. Now, that leading term, that's the dominant term, right? So this, this is going to be sort of the most important term when the absolute value of x is big, okay? So are there large and positive or large and negative, right? So as you kind of head out, right, 
your polynomial is going to look a lot like one of these. So the so-called end behavior, if you like, what happens eventually, is determined by that leading term. Okay? Everything else controls what's going on in the middle, right? So if you've got additional terms other than that leading term, that's going to sort of, you know, spice up things here in the middle, right? You might have some roots, right? So we know what it kind of looks like when x is big, um, and when x is small, so if we're kind of nearer to the origin, that's where we want to look at the roots. Okay? So as an example, let's say we have a polynomial, and I'm going to factor it for you. Let's say we have something that looks like x minus 1 times x plus 2 squared. Okay, that's our polynomial. What is that going to look like? Well, let's draw some axes. So first of all, we know that if we were to multiply this all out, and we don't have to multiply everything out, but we can see without doing all the work that the leading term, right, there's going to be an x squared here times x, so the leading term is going to be x cubed. Right, plus some other stuff. So we know that eventually it's got to be doing got to be doing something like that, right? It's got to look like n equals three because it's cubic, right? But you might have some other stuff going on in between. So that's where you look at the zeros. So this thing touches the x-axis twice. It touches it once when x is equal to one. So let's mark off say one, two, three. So there's a 0 there, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. The other 0 is at minus 2. So what I know is that I'm going to come down, I'm going to hit that 0. So what happens at that 0? Well, one of the things that I can do is I can kind of on the side, I can do a little number line. I can mark off those two zeros, right? Minus 2 and 1. Those are the two roots for my polynomial. Okay? Um, I know that it's going to be positive out here. I know it's going to be negative out here. Okay? Right? Because the leading term is x cubed, I know it's got to look like that. Um, these are the only places where the sign can possibly change, right? These are the only places where we might be crossing the x-axis, so the only places where we might be changing from positive to negative. Um, so this is either negative or positive in between. How do we decide? Well, one way we could do it is we just plug in something in between, like 0, and say, what do I get? Well, I get minus 1 times 4. That's negative. Okay, so I know it's negative in between. The other way to see it is to realize that because this term is squared, right, this will never be negative. You won't get a sign change at minus 2 because this can't be negative. This term, which has an odd power, that's going to change sign to the zero, right? So we know we get a sign change at one, but not at minus two. So we get this sort of sign diagram. So what this tells me is that I should be crossing at one. And now I maybe get rid of this because it might be hard to connect things up. So I want something that is going to cross. It's going to cross at one. The other thing, and by the way, the other thing I can get is I can get that y-intercept, right? These are my two x-intercepts. What's the y-intercept? Uh, we work that out. When x is 0, it's at minus 4, so it's down here, right? So I know that it's going to go up like that. And I know it's got to come back up there. The one thing I don't know is I don't know exactly when that's going to turn it around. That's where calculus would come into the picture. Calculus will let us find the exact location of where this thing bottoms out. It's got to hit a bottom and it's got to come back up, right? It's got to come back up. Because it's got to hit that root at 2. Okay? But I don't cross at 2, right? Because this thing doesn't change sign, right? I have to be negative on both sides. So I, I just come and I kiss the axis and I come back down, right? And I've got most of my graph. The one detail I'm missing is here, right? So I need some, I need a bit of calculus 
to, uh, to figure out exactly what's going on there. Um, but you can apply these basic principles. Even once you're doing these, like you're, you're doing curve sketching, you're in your calculus course, you're trying to figure out what the graph some polynomial looks like, you're lost in derivatives and second derivatives and, and intervals of increase and decrease and concavity and all of this. Remember that you can get most of your polynomial graph just by finding the roots, if you can, looking at the leading term to get the end behavior. And all that calculus is going to do for you is fill in a few details in the middle that you can't quite get just by looking at the zeros and the leading term.